Welcome to You But Better Interviews. 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 We interview the most brilliant thinkers and highest achieving badasses on the face of the planet. I have a dream that one day there is an indefinable, mysterious power. Four score and seven years ago, friends, Romans, countrymen, you are the light of the world. It's not just an interview, it's the interview. You, but better. Hello, better yous. Welcome to the You But Better podcast. We have a fantastic interview. Lex, I really do think this is the the best interview we've had in a long time. Seth, I'm freaking out. I'm so excited about this. This has cultural relevance and it has historical relevance. Uh, I kind of feel like my head is actually exploding right now. Lex, there's not a lot of opportunities for the past and the present and the future to meet in one moment, and that is what's going to happen today, Better Use. In the future, you will hear the episode we're recording today, and today our guest is going to blow your mind with wisdom from the past. She is a brilliant, brilliant person, and her name is Emma. Lex, can you tell us a little bit about our guest? Absolutely. I am so delighted to Better Use. This is an exciting day because we have literally the most popular most viral, most interesting advice columnist in the world right now here on You But Better. We're talking, of course, about Emma, the author mm. of Dear Jane, the ultra popular Washington Post dating and lifestyle advice columnist. Be you know her, my you heart. love her. So good. For those not familiar, which shouldn't be anyone, Dear Jane is a unique advice column where readers who are struggling with relationship issues submit letters handwritten letters and get a response from none other than Jane Austen, AKA our writer, Emma. Wow. Now this column started as Emma's snail mail correspondence service before blowing up in popularity and being picked up by the Washington post mm. background before becoming a viral column sensation. Emma got a PhD in English literature from Rutgers with a Incredible. specific focus on Jane Austen. She wrote her thesis on the nuance of expression that women had in letters in Jane Austen's work. Emma has some incredible insights and advice to offer all of us on love, on relationships, and life in general, filtered through the timeless perspective of Jane Austen. It is time to unite that timeline. Emma, we're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So let's start off with this. Your column has some incredible perspectives and features to it. The Dear Jane column has this unique feature that readers must send their advice questions as handwritten letters in cursive. And all responses by you are also published in handwritten cursive. Mm. This is something that you had in your correspondence service. And you absolutely insisted that the Washington Post keep it up. And in fact, you were not willing to do the advice column unless they agreed to that. So why did you originally decide to work exclusively in handwritten cursive and insist that all of your correspondents do the same? That's such a great question. Thank you so much for asking, Lex. Uh, see, to me, writing in cursive is really important because it shows intention. It mm. shows thought. It mm. shows planning. And it shows that you care about what you're actually writing about. Much mm. like the women in Jane Austen's novels, uh, it is important to write in cursive. Cursive is a lost art, and it's something sadly that is going away. And I wanna make sure we preserve cursive forever. And I want my readers to know that writing in cursive will be here forever because it's how I correspond. It's how, it's how I express myself. I, I love that. You know, uh, an analogy that immediately comes up is that typing with a keyboard is the fast food of writing. Ugh, oh, yeah. I, t I could not agree more. Uh, you know, if, if that is the fast food, then I want a four course meal. You know, I want, I want soup yeah. to nuts. Mm. I want to, yes. I want to have all the different courses laid out for me in cursive. I want I want someone to really, like I said, think through what they're saying. And to do so, they must go through many, many drafts. And to do that, I think cursive is the only way. In the, in the uh, old days, they served the nuts last. 
every time they would give you the nuts last, you would have to wait for your nuts. Correct. That was after dessert or for dessert. I'm not entirely sure about that. But the point is, is that we can slow down. We don't need this fast meal of texting and typing and email and the non Stop information. I mean, that is something that we like to remind you frequently on Instagram and Twitter and all of our social media channels. Be sure to follow all those. But the point is sometimes we need to slow down with a slow food meal. Slow food, not fast. And cursive is the way to do that. Love that. I totally agree. And and I just want to say I noticed in the news the other day there is a teacher's union that is championing your work that is keeping curses, cursive alive. And uh I'm just I just think there are lots of there are lots of things that we don't do in service of education. And what you're doing is is it's more than helping the people that who are writing to you, who are asking for your advice. You are keeping something alive. Cursive is the Latin of writing. Yes, it's so true. Uh, if it's the Latin of writing, then declaricus me. Uh, I mm. want to make sure mm. that that all my not only my readers, but their children, their future children, right? Because most of my advice goes to people who are looking for love. Uh, I want their future children to be able to preserve this art form. Cursive is an art form. And it's, it's, we're losing it. We're losing cursive. And it, and it drives me crazy. Well, let, let me ask you something, though. Uh, there are lots of people who have a very difficult time reading cursive. I'm not one of those people. I read v everything I like to read. I a lot of times get my assistant to translate it or transcribe it into yeah. cursive for me first. And I read it just because it, I, it feels more elegant. It feels more important. I uh, do the same thing. I actually will. I will admit I do type on a keyboard, but I will have my uh, assistant, Shaz, Shaz transcribe does. in cursive onto a, a moleskin journal. Yeah. Yes. But it, but anyway, I, I just I just want to say I want to support that you that was that was very toss right there. That was truth. I believe that's Latin for truth. I'm not Correct. totally sure. Correct. But, it is. Excellent. But let me ask you this. Do you feel like in some people are big detractors of this and say you're keeping out a whole segment of society who can't read your advice. They can't learn from Jane Austen. They can't learn from Emma. Do you feel like it's important to be educated before you fall in love? Yes, I think education is a, a prerequisite for falling in love. Mm. Uh, you cannot fall in love with someone who cannot keep up with your wit. And that is yeah. truly Ooh. important, truly important that you, you have wit, you have education, you mm. have the ability to read, the ability to stroll around the parlor, the ability to play light games. Yes. Like card games, uh, all things that must one must be educated to do. Yep, I've heard it said, if you don't know everything there is to know about ancient Mesopotamia, how do you know that you love the person that you say you love? It's exactly. So true. So true. Well, Emma, let me ask you. Cher, Prince, Beyonce, people who define what it means to have those names, one name only. What makes you someone that goes by Emma? You are the quintessential Emma when you take that one name. What, what makes you feel uh, qualified and uh, confident in that choice? Well, you see, I've been studying Jane Austen for years, mm. almost a decade. Wow, and 10 years, wow. And yes, and I have found that people really come to rely on my advice. People really come to rely on me mm. as a champion of not only Jane Austen, but also everything she believed in. For example, yeah. cursive, but yeah. also, for example, right, being educated, yeah. being witty, being merciless with the tongue. Of course. Mm, I love I that. Drinking tea drinking tea of course yes. and i'm a huge huge supporter of You're that talking to a tea head here am i i am an absolute tea head that's wonderful i mean honestly drinking taking time for drinking tea in the day is just a, a, essential you cannot have your your brain fully functioning if it's not for a good cup of tea that's in the true. afternoon 
with some biscuits. It has to come with biscuits. You've got to have biscuits. There are lots of people who do not want to eat biscuits because of the carbs. The tea negates that. Eat the biscuit. A lot of people don't realize that gluten-free keto biscuits are a thing, and I Mm. feel sorry for those people. But anyway, I think with the idea of Cher, Prince, Beyonce, Emma, I think there's something timeless there, and I think part of what's going on is that in Jane Austen's work, you are tapping into something timeless. Like, what do you think it is about Jane Austen's perspective and principles that make her so friggin' timeless? You know, that's that's exactly what I was getting at. I, I, I think Jane Austen, she really captured what it is to be a woman. And in mm-hmm. the, these days, being a woman is difficult. It is yes. something tricky to navigate, but no trickier than it was for Jane Austen in her time. Mm-hmm. I think being a woman in this modern era comes with so many, so many different challenges. But I think Jane Austen holds up. I think her advice, if she were able to give it today, and I try to channel that as if I'm talking to her ghost, Yeah, I think her advice is just as relevant and timely as any anything. And I think that really comes from her wisdom around being a woman. Has has she, I'm just curious, you talked about talking to her ghost. Has Jane Austen ever appeared in your dreams? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Many times. Does she talk to you? Does she dance for you? Does yeah, she What does she write? do in your dreams? Oh, often, often we are in a dance hall uh, and it, mm. is, it is loud and I'm unable to reach her. And that is the, the tricky part oh, about no. the dreams is that I am unable to fully dance with Jane Austen because she's too busy dancing with gentlemen. Uh, mm. And that will always be my lament is that I cannot dance with Jane Austen. Oh, wow. So maybe part of your, would you say that part of your career and part of your driving force is to pursue that elusive dance with Jane Austen? Yes, you could say that. Yes, absolutely. Wow. That is incredible. Um, What is it about Jane that, that makes her so good at understanding relationships and love? You know, Jane Austen never married, which Mm. is something that I truly think is abominable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it says a lot about the men at that time. I mean, it does. The truly. men, the men in our time, have progressed so much. I think it's for because of podcasts like ours. I don't want to take all the credit, but men have just gotten so much better than they used to be. Truly. Some of them haven't, but I will just point out that not everyone listens to podcasts, and that's a that's big true. problem. It's a big bane of our society. Yeah, truly. I mean. I personally have never been on a podcast other than this one because mm. this is the only podcast that I think holds men up to a higher standard. Thank and you. that is that is why I am on this podcast, Lex and Seth. Uh, now, honestly, Jane Austen never married, but mm-hmm. I think that is, like you said, more of a reflection of the men of her time. They were just not able to appreciate her wit, her humor, her ability to dance i think she was a great dancer according to the texts yeah uh she was she was a wonderful human being and if only she were able to live today i think we could have found her a a wonderful match do you do you think that in an in an ideal romance there should be dancing and witticisms happening simultaneously so that there's this wonderful romantic dance while the man and the woman are ex are exchanging flirtatious witty comments Mm. absolutely yeah absolutely i think you know it's it's multitasking for sure and it's something that might be difficult for men today to who have not the most experience with dancing in dance halls Uh, but i think going to a dance hall is particularly important these days Uh, i think it gets one off one's phone it gets Mm -hmm. one away from the technology and it gets one just connected with their dance partner and that's the way you can truly get to know someone. It's true. I believe that whenever you go to a dance class, the movements your feet make is like, it's like, it's, it's the cursive of movement. Oh, better. I could not have said it better myself, Seth. Yeah. So you heard that, gentlemen. You heard that, ladies. You heard that, everybody. If you have a free dance class in your, in your town, go to the free dance class. Practice your witticisms. Sign up for maybe a four four dance class package or something. 
but you got to get in there. You got to practice your dance moves. And if you're not talking and dancing at the same time, you're doing it wrong. And yeah, dancing is, it is absolutely the cursive of moving your feet. So get into that dance Mm. class, learn to move elegantly and work on multitasking with the witticisms. You want to throw in that, that badinage and that, that balderdash and such. Okay. Emma, your columns have attracted their fair share of controversy. Now, this is something, by the way, this is something we are super, super familiar with here on YVB because our advice is for high vibe people and sometimes the haters get nasty. Anyway, in a recent Dear Jane, one of your readers confessed that she's dated a lot of loser men, but she's ready to find that special man. Now, you told her, don't marry him if he doesn't own land already. This Mm. caused an eruption on Twitter with various journalists and writers and others calling you out for elitism, double standards for men and women, and also just for being ignorant of the economic conditions that make it hard for millennials to own a home. Now, a lot of these people, let's be honest here, they're two online jerkwads and their opinions suck and don't matter. But we noticed you don't really respond to haters, which we personally love because that's a focus thing. And yeah, we, we don't do have not time like for to that. respond for haters. We just, it would be, impo- it would make life impossible. Too many haters. Now, is is your strategy of sticking to your correspondence and your cursive and freezing out the haters and just not dealing with them, is that something you've chosen consciously? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh, haters, if you will, or people who disagree uh, yes. with what I have to say are not worth the time of day. Jane Austen had many critics in her day and she ignored them, namely because she had a pen name. So she was not actually publishing under her name in her lifetime. So that's something I like to emulate. I like to publish under my pen name, Emma, Mm -hmm. and I like to pretend that all the critics are just simply jealous. Uh, And I think it was true in Jane Austen's time as it is true now in this time that People who have criticisms of what I have to say are truly just jealous of the women that I am uplifting. I think they're jealous of them. I think Mm. they're jealous of the standards that I'm upholding. And they're just jealous, for example, that they cannot own land. I think if they cannot own land, then they're they're simply just jealous. Mm. Jealousy brings out the very worst in people. Mm. And one of the worst things you can do when you're jealous is criticize someone for making you feel that way. You know, the insecurity is within you. It's on you to figure that out. You feel you feel frustrated that somebody says you need to own land? Get land and get over it. Yeah, get land or get the modern equivalent of land, which could be an online presence. It could be a great sub stack. It could be a digital product that you sell. or It could be an NFT of a piece of land you hope to one day acquire. Yeah, absolutely. It could be a crypto farm on a very small piece of land. There's mm. a lot of ways to quote unquote own land in the modern era. Okay. Emma, another piece of advice that got a lot of backlash. Huge backlash on this. Yeah. This one was a big backlash. And again, we, we credit you for, um, poise. You have so much poise. You have so much poise and, and, uh, non nonchalance or, or chalance. Uh, do you think that when a man wants to take his lady to a dance hall and dance with her exclusively, do you think that's a solid sign of commitment and intention? Oh, absolutely. I think, Now, I think to go back to the dance hall thing for a moment, I think it is important for a man to bring a a woman to a dance hall. That said, if he dances with other ladies, it is an affront. It is -hmm. is an insult Uh. to her and her family. And I think it's really important. I just want to highlight this point that, and I'm, I'm so glad you brought it back up, you know, that going to a dance hall is one thing, but it's another thing to dance solely with your lady. Yes. Yeah. Uh, If you dance with any other ladies, it's just, it's an insult. Yeah. Now this is going to be for some of the people in our audience who are a part of the uh, Burning Man and polyamory communities. Yeah. The swing dancers as we call them. Yeah. We do call them the swing dancers. This is going to be a little bit hard for them to hear. Now I have noticed in some columns, people have brought up this sort of modern topic of polyamory and you have smacked them down. You have not wanted to even deal with that no uh i believe in traditional marriage i believe in a Mm. marriage between a man and a woman Mm. however i have become more open especially with my readers of course uh, of the homosexual variety yeah that 
a man and a man can marry, that a woman and a woman can marry. Yeah. But I still believe that they should uphold monogamous, traditional marital standards. I did, yeah. I did uh, want to appreciate that uh, progressiveness. I did notice that you said that um, gay marriage was fine as long as they uh, owned horses. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Which I think is a really, it's really big for the gay community because there is a huge overlap between the horse owning community and the gay community. And I just think that's fantastic. And if they don't own a horse, they can always go and purchase one. Yeah. yeah. It's simple. Absolutely. Horses are truly wonderful beasts that always calm me down. Emma, we told our better use to write in with their relationship questions for you, true to your style. We told them to write those questions in cursive, then screenshot them and post them on Insta with the hashtag Dear Jane and hashtag Better You Better Love. We got around 13,000 questions and we're not sure why it was so few, but we think it was because of the cursive thing. But anyway, yeah. we decided to pick out, out of the 13,000, a few of our favorite questions. Can we ask you a couple of those now if you'd be willing to do that on the air? Absolutely. It's why I'm here. Excellent. And by the way, thank you for accepting the laptop and microphone that we sent to your uh, P.O. box. We really appreciate that. We know that technology is not your usual thing, but we super appreciate that. Okay, um, Seth, should we crack into that first letter there? Yes, please. Um, well, do, do you want to read this one? Or you... Okay, I'll, I'll read the first one. You read the second one, yeah? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, Dear Jane, I'm struggling to find the right man, someone to marry me and call me his wife, hmm. my own personal Mr. Darcy, if you will. Thought you'd appreciate that reference. I have dating profiles on Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble. My profiles highlight my interests in travel, riding horses, and baking sourdough, and I feel like I'm showing just the right amount of boob, but not too much. But I keep meeting all of these weirdos and creeps. What am I doing wrong? Help. Sincerely frustrated in Phoenix. Oh, frustrated in Phoenix. It's something I have heard time and time again. And I must say that you're going about it all wrong with hmm. dating apps. It's just not the way to meet a fellow these days. I recommend renting out your home. So take your home, rent it out, and then find a man who might be the brother of the person you rented the home out to, maybe maybe a cousin, and then don't talk to them for eight years. Find your way back to them, and that will be the man you marry. You really believe in the slow romance. Correct. Yes. Those are the only ones that last. It's true. And if he can wait eight years for you, it's he's worth the lifetime to be with. Wow. That's now I can just confirm that the women that I've married at Burning Man, those have been fast marriages and they've never worked out. So that is true. But I've been the best man at I've been the best uh man at every single one of these Burning Man weddings. And I have to say, Lex, you just you gotta too you fast. gotta freeze them out for eight years. Maybe that's what's too going fast. on for you, buddy. Too fast, too furious. That's not good for you. Too fast, too furious, no dice. Seth, would you like to read the next one? Please. Dear Jane. I hope this letter finds you fair. The melancholy that has been visiting me these past five months just made a permanent home in my living room. The love of my life has consented to marry my sister, Becca. How can one find meaning in life when life chooses not only to introduce you to, to love and strip it away, but to give that love to the vile woman who bullied you for wearing braces for six years? Forever in mourning, Elizabeth the Brokenhearted. Oh. Wow. Elizabeth, I... I feel for you, really, I do. Now, Elizabeth, it sounds like this gentleman is not the right match for you. It sounds like instead what you should do is set him up with your sister and in so doing, embarrass yourself. And once you've embarrassed yourself, you'll find that the man who's been there all along, your second cousin, is actually the man you need to marry. Mm. Wow. That is that is so brilliant because you're sort of what you're sort of doing is you're you're setting up you're kind of setting up this series of like mouse traps that will go off that will lead to your love. Correct. 
correct. It's exactly how Jane Austen would have done it. And it's exactly how Elizabeth should do it. Wow. That's uh, love is nothing if it's not Machiavellian, right? Yeah. Now, in, in our very online connected hyper and modern times, we do tend to have this thing against marrying cousins and second cousins. But you yeah, think, I was going to ask about the yeah. whole in family marriage thing. Yeah, go, yeah, go for it, Seth. Is, are you more likely to find a good match for you if you marry within your family? Oh, I mean, I think marrying within the family or within close relation to the family is something to be considered. Something hmm. that the the modern woman often poo poos, but honestly, is something that should be considered, uh, especially in these days when land owning gentlemen are so hard to come by. Hmm. I think it's important to consider second cousins, brothers of best friends, yeah. best friends of brothers, uh, you know, any anything in that realm. Yeah, yeah would I- you can. Cons- I'm just curious. Would you consider? a uh someone who owns a large amount of cryptocurrency a landowner or do you does it have to be physical land oh such a good question as long as they're able to provide a home that one can have a good hearth then oh, yeah definitely. sure you know then sure i would consider that owning land well you know i never thought about the okay i can't stop thinking about the marrying your family thing um yeah i i never thought about when your grandfather passes away, hmm. it he's going to leave land to you. He's going to leave land to your cousin. Hmm. And if you get married, that's twice the land. Correct. Yes. You know, if you if you marry that cousin, it's exactly right. You're you're reacquiring the land from your grandfather. Yeah, I mean, I, I swore off most of my family years ago after I started this podcast and gained a lot of success, but I do see the benefit in trying to trying to make that work you know if you do have if you still talk to your your family they're not holding you down then then i guess that still works now steph i have a question for you oh please as it's well known amongst my readers and followers that i am indeed single unfortunately yes of course what a catch you are and you've mentioned that quite a few times that you are of wealth from this podcast uh yeah yeah well i i try not to mention it too much but i do i am very wealthy the podcast has treated us very well. Seth has done really well for himself. Yes, Thanks, Seth. Liz. I just wanted to know, are you single and are you looking to own land? Wow. Well, honestly, Emma, what a wonderful proposition. I've never, well, I won't say that. The Dalai Lama said some things, but um, I am actually totally married to Amaranth. She is a doctor of manifestation. She's a genius. And um, if I wasn't locked down with Amaranth, just I've I've I won't I don't want to put it the wrong way, but I've I've fallen in love with you a little bit just reading your column. And oh, it happens. It happens all the time. Your your word though your way with words, your way with advice. It's it is so endearing and romantic. And I think I've started to be able to open my heart again. So thank you for that. But MF, you, if there are not already suitors, horsebacked, top hat, doffing suitors that are beating down your door, I think they will be in short order because yeah. you do have a way with words. It's a romance of the language and a kind of slow seduction of the soul that I think has enraptured all of us. And I'll say almost too many men listen to our podcast. So you are yep. going to be on the radars of a lot of eligible bachelor bachelors, a lot of a lot of great men who have done our circling retreat thing and and those guys definitely own land. These are these are in these are enlightened men. I we think that you'll like at least some of them. And um is there anywhere that we should now we know that you don't really believe in the digital presence, but yeah. where should these men, these better use, send their handwritten letters? Can they send handwritten letters to you, perhaps delivered by horse or by hand or by carrier pigeon? Correct. Yes, they they can send that to the Washington Post. The advice column will definitely filter those through and send them my way. They can also send them to my P.O. Box, P.O. Box 156. One five six. Okay, we will post the specific details um, in the show notes for that. So check out those. So better use, gentlemen. If you would like to send a very kind and considerate and romantic letter to Emma, you can do that 
with a handwritten cursive letter delivered by hand or on horseback to the Washington Post or snail mail it to the P.O. box, that is something we would highly recommend. Or Emma, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to Burning Man, but Lex and I go every year. No, I wouldn't, Seth, I wouldn't. I, I don't think we should, no, we shouldn't go there. I don't think Emma would, no, that's a, no. You're good that's, enough. That's, that's a non-starter. That's, I don't think we should, no. Okay. Definitely not. Fair enough. Definitely not. Okay, sorry. Shall we do another Dear Jane? Um, we do have we do have another Dear Jane. We did pick three of them. Um, Seth, do you want to read this one? Yeah, this one really uh, spoke to me. Um, Dear Jane. I just got engaged with my girlfriend of six years. Congratulations, listener. We waited for a long time because I wanted to wait to be bumped up to lead mechanic at my automotive shop. I got the promotion and made the move two months ago. My fiance is super stoked, but I'm starting to develop very strong feelings for a new mechanic that got hired at my job. Mm. Not only is the woman at my shop gorgeous, but she is so strong and wise. She reminds me of my mother and father. I really like my fiance, but we've changed so much in the last six years that sometimes I wonder how long we'll stay compatible. Should I risk the love I have now, or might this new mechanic repair the void inside my engine? Thanks. A better you that thinks they can do better. Wow. Oh, oh what a conundrum. I am, I am truly torn. I, I do not know if I know the answer to this question. Wow. I will do my best based on what I know of my Jane Austen, who would say to follow one's heart, mm. but also follow gentry, right? If this woman that works at a mechanic shop is indeed a mechanic, yes. then I must assume that she is not of the gentry class. So mm. I would go with the fiance that you've been with for six years that it sounds like she is of a more gentlewomanly class. Yeah, the landed gentry. Yes. That's right. You know, it's it's that's 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 something I've rarely thought about, but whenever you're looking at a, a spouse, a partner, you really want to think about class. You really want to think about where are they in their life and how is it going to make you look whenever you go out, whenever you go dancing, whenever you go horseback riding. Are people going to think that you're out with somebody of high esteem or are they going to think that you're out with the help? Yeah, but it's, and it's not just about what people think about you. Cause we're really big here on the you, but better podcast that it doesn't matter what other people think about you. And that is totally, that totally coexists with managing other people's perceptions of you at all mm -hmm. time while also realizing that it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But that being said, sorry, I lost my point. What were you saying, Seth? So what I was saying was you might want to think about how your partner reflects on you for yourself, for others. Oh, I remember now. I remember what I was oh. going to say, which is that you want to make sure that you date someone who's on your level. Who oh, is, yeah, that's what who's I Who's vibing at yeah. your vibe. So if you're vibing at, and we use different, you know, we use different words Vernacular. here. So the words that I use are not going to be exactly the words that Emma uses, but you want to date someone who, if you're at a high vibe, you date a high vibe. If you're a high vibe kind of person and you're dating a low vibe kind of person, that's not going to vibe. So if you're dating a landed, if you're at a landed gentry kind of vibe mm. and you date someone who's at a, more of like a studio apartment on the east side kind of vibe, yeah, that might not work. That's, that's, the, that's the whole point. Um, I, sorry, I have a question for both of you. How do, how do you know if you're at a mid vibe? How do you know what vibe you're personally at? Yeah. Is there, for our listeners, I know I'm a high vibe. I know that. Yeah. But how would I know if I was in a mid vibe? So, oh. so I think to, to translate that, if to translate that into a question for Emma, it would be like, how do you know you are landed gentry and you're ready to propose? Mm. Yes. Okay. I, I, that's exactly what I was going to say is that truly to be at a high vibe, as you put it, one must own land, one must own a, at least one horse, mm. one must have tea every afternoon, yes. one must write in cursive, one must correspond in written letter, Yeah. one must follow all of the rules of the landed gentry. And if mm. you're not there, then you're not at a, quote, high vibe. You're instead at maybe a low vibe or not even a vibe. You know, one might not have wow. a vibe. You might have no vibe to give or receive. Wow. Correct. Correct. 
Correct. So check your files, look at all of your deeds, check out what land you own, start there. And if you don't have any land, get to writing in cursive, okay? You you can't, there's so many things you can't control. If you have no money and you can't get land, you're, you know, you're not in a great place. But you can write in cursive today and you can get better at it and you can find land eventually. Yeah, we all have to start somewhere. Okay, I think we should get in. Thank you, Emma. That was that was outstanding. Thank you so much for and thank answering you some of these questions from the better these. use. Yeah, thank you for submitting all those questions and sorry that we didn't get to all of them. Okay, we have we do have a couple of more questions where we're going to branch out into some some more um interesting territory. We've Maybe a little the, more lurid territory. Yeah, so you do have a Emma, you do have a rival advice columnist that we wanted to ask you about. I think Seth was going to ask this question. Yeah, we bandied about maybe not asking this question because we didn't want to put you off. And we know that you are so good at shutting out the haters. We don't want to bring yeah. any into your point of view. But I think Emma's composure is so excellent that I don't think I don't think you'll be thrown off. So I think we should I think you should ask it. You're impeccably composed. And that's why I have to say Vicky Franken. The notorious Mary Shelley advice columnist has a bit of a beef with you, mm -hmm. right? And she's even gone so far as to claim that your advice is a little more uh, Emily Bronte inspired than sh Jane Austen. Do, uh, would you like to address these claims? Uh, well, Vicky and I have had a long-standing <sighs> debate, uh, tiff, if you will. Yeah. We've mm -hmm. had a long-standing argument, and honestly. It is something that I have debated about in my own head for some time about whether or not I should address Vicky at all. Mm. But what I will say is that after years and years of arguing with her, debating with her, and just simply going head to head with her, that we started to fall in love. Wow. Really? Yes. You heard it here first. It's something that I, I could not see coming. Uh, it's something that I truly did not understand until it happened. Wow. But much like Elizabeth Bennett, I think I have fallen for the person who most, most irked Un me. Is also the one who most understands you. Correct. Yes. Now, this has all been through, ha through handwritten cursive correspondence through snail mail, correct? Correct. And, and also, if, and to tell me if this is correct, you've, you've never actually met or seen, your, seen her. You've only sent each other hand-drawn pictures of each other. Correct. That's all correct. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. And, and, and though I know you had this beef with her, I will say I've, I've heard Vicki Franken is a very well put together person and uh, she is a huge, she's a huge advice columnist that, you know, we've considered bringing on the pod, but no offense to Vicki and she's someone you love. You're our number one in terms of uh, author yeah. advice columns. Yes. And I now, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I just want to say, Mary Shelley is is a good writer, but she's no good. Jane Austen. She, yeah, she's she's serviceable. And now, now originally, I think part of the tiff was based on the fact that Vicky's advice was all based on the perspective of Frankenstein. Yes. And yes. that was not something that you thought had the kind of value that Jane Austen is bringing to the table. Correct. It's I mean, pretty yeah. fatalistic stuff. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, how many times can one recommend that you take a dead body and reconstructure it mm. uh, to make it your friend? You know, how, how many times can one give that advice without it getting old and stale, staler yeah. than the biscuits that I had for tea the other day? Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, wow. that's, that's unfortunate. Well, that is so, that is so wonderful to hear that you've, that, that love has blossomed, which I think just goes to show that your point that writing letters is the way to go. Cause you can really let that infatuation and that warmth and that love grow over time as you read those beautiful words. Yeah. You really let love ferment that way. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's so crazy that you, you deal with so much scrutiny. How do you think that Jane Austen would succeed in the face of literary internet scrutiny. Yeah. From all these haters, from all these, um, yeah, all these people with their quick opinions. Do you think Jane would have continued and pressed on as a writer? Do you think she would have given up? Yeah. Well, you know, Jane wrote most of her works in her 20s oh. before she ever published any of her works. So she actually got most of her writing accomplished before any critics were able to look at it. 
Uh, now, mm. unfortunately for me, I have been constantly barraged with criticism, constantly. Yeah. And it is something that I must gain up the courage by looking to Jane and looking to the works that she's written and, and go, mm. Jane would not deal with this. Jane would not stand for this. Now, yeah. she did stop writing after she was published. I get it. Yeah. And unfortunately, some of her works were published after her death. Mm. Yeah. So posthumously published. Yeah. Now, I I wish if if only my greatest works could be published after I was dead. I, I think that would make me truly happy. Seth and I actually, the greatest podcast we ever recorded, we actually never released. And we gave instructions to Dwayne to publish it after our death. Yeah, that is assuming that Dwayne uh, lives longer than us, which is tough. He, he eats he a lot of will. Cheetos. He eats a lot of Cheetos. I think he'll outlast us. I hope not. No offense. I believe us. It is amazing though that Jane it is amazing though that Jane Austen that she was able to create such works in her twenties. I mean, honestly, in my twenties, I was half the I didn't know I didn't have my direction in life. It took me a little longer to find myself. In my twenties, I was basically drunk on extremely strong kombucha. Mm. Yeah. My twenties were insane. I I was I was practically uh just living shoeless and nomadically uh, from going from music festival to music festival, looking for the meaning of life. Well, uh, Seth and Lex, I must confess that in my twenties, I was one to nip a little brandy myself. Really? You nipped at it. I wow. nipped at it. Yes. Wow. So speaking of nipping, you are doing more than just nipping. You are working on, this is exciting for us. You are working on your own 800 page Pride and Prejudice fan fiction novel, leveraging some of your success here. This novel gets into, and this is something you revealed in one of your recent columns, in one of your answers. It gets into what happens to Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth oh. Bennett. It's written the same stylistic lyrical prose as Jane Austen. And you're really staying true to form here. You've commented that you really detest, quote unquote, that smut that modern authors are doing. Yeah. Um, you dislike the contemporary adaptations, the Bridget Jones's diary, the cluelesses. So yeah, how are you staying true to that Jane Austen spirit and not letting that kind of modernism infect this fan fiction? Yes. Well, I think the the key points for me is that a lot of people envision sex as mm. the next step for Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth. Mm. And that is simply not the case. I mean, really? yes, yes, no, they, I, they would have first gotten married, which they did at the very, very end of the novel. But then there's so much ceremony that comes with marriage in those days. Uh, yeah. And hopefully my female readers can keep up with that. Wow. Tradition these days. Mm. Uh, but so much ceremony goes into it. And that's the first 200 pages is just the ceremony around the marriage. I love that. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot you have to do before you consummate and have sex. Correct. Even right. even yes. after marriage, even even once you're married, there's still a lot of ceremony and yeah, pomp and circumstance. Correct. Yeah, that, that would be uh, that would be a hard road for me to hoe. Yeah, Lex would have a difficult time with that. Lex it likes to get to things quickly. He is he's a huge proponent of the four hour work week and he goes to work hard and fast. Maybe you can explore this a little bit yourself, Lex, because the anticipation might be enough for you, my friend. The thing is, is this podcast is not just about improving and challenging the lives of our better use. It's also about challenging us. I know it seems hard to understand better use, but even Seth and I have room to grow. That's right. Ponder that this weekend, my friends. Yeah. <laughs> you think that you but better guys have it all figured out? We have it all figured out, but there's always more to be explored. Even when you have it all figured out, there's always more to figure out. That's, That's what right. I like to say. All is more. That's what I say. Even when you're perfect, you can still get better. Yep. Seth, you were going to ask about that Austonian path to love. First, I just want to say, Emma, we are so grateful to have had you today. You have provided such a wonderful perspective. Our better yous are going to be better for having heard it. That being said, what is the Austinian path to love? Letters. Letters. Write a letter. Cursive. Write a letter for your love. Mm. Write it in cursive and make sure you write true to your heart. Mm. And do it for eight years. Yes. Yes. Minimum. Minimum. Minimum eight years. There you have it, better use. We've been telling you to journal forever, 
My challenge to you is journal in cursive this week. Get some practice in so that you can write those letters. You can find a way to love. Emma, thank you so much. Emma, thank you. This has been absolutely incredible. Thank you for having me. It's been my absolute delight. And uh, expect a few letters this week, okay? (laughs) Maybe more than a few. Yeah. I look forward to them. I will read each and every one of them. You, but better. Friends, thank you for listening and becoming a better you. And if you haven't followed us on social media yet, you haven't fully committed. Find those social links in the episode description. Also, please rate and review us on your podcast listening app. It helps more people find this podcast and become totally enlightened. And remember, don't just be you, be you, but better.